So I, I figured anyway, because it's our last day together in Amsterdam after we've done filming for the last few days, uh, I kind of had an idea in mind before coming here uh, about doing a video that kind of just gives like the full-on lifestyle expectation of what makes a guy great. And, you know, when I kind of compare it to like the lifestyle that you've created for yourself at the moment, where you're able to travel, uh, you're able to date, you're able to, you know, you worked hard for, for what you got. I thought, you know what, would be a great idea for a video calling it how to be a fucking legend. And, uh, you know, and I don't really care about swearing in this video, by all means. Feel free to as well. I mean, I'm not monetized, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but I like the idea of guys working towards greatness and putting in that hard work and effort into doing that. So I've kind of got this idea of at least breaking that down into three areas that I can kind of pick your brain on. Um, and uh, we can most certainly uh, discuss them. And those three areas are mindset, because I feel like if you've got that inner game or that shadow work sorted, whatever people want to call it, if you've got that down, then that definitely is like most of the battle already essentially achieved. Lifestyle, because I think, you know, when you think about a guy who is at the top of his game, uh, in his life, he's traveling, he's on top of his fitness, nutrition and stuff. So it'd be cool to kind of pick your brain on things that you do as well as maybe what you recommend to other guys to kind of do with that. And then last one, of course, is dating. The How can you be an absolute legend in the field of dating as well? So I'll kind of give you the choice. You can We can do them in any kind of order or we can do them in literally that order that I've just said. So mindset, lifestyle and then dating entirely up to you which one do you think we should have a try at we'll start with mindset mindset okay yeah. so in your opinion what can guys do to become an absolute fucking legend with their mindset mm, yeah that's a big that's a, it's a very big like, question. philosophical question isn't big it? question yeah um yeah i think for me the biggest the biggest shift came when i understood that perception was reality Okay. So the way that I viewed the world or the way that I perceived the world was the way that the world started to respond to me. Mm. So if I, if I left the house thinking that everybody was going to be against me, every approach was going to go terrible, all the women were going to be really frosty, no one was going to be receptive, then usually I became what I thought and my perception of the world around me definitely translated into my overall reality there. So understanding that perception is definitely reality. And mm. I do think that as somebody who has done a lot of the external work, like when I first started making my videos four years ago, I was definitely, I mean, I look like I just come out the fucking gulags. Like I, wasn't, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't in a cheery position whatsoever. Um, and definitely with all the guys who I work with, guys who should be absolutely crushing it on paper with women who look really good, what I've noticed is they still feel like the ugly duckling inside. Like mm. the internal hasn't caught up with the external. And the analogy that I always use is it's like working your bollocks off to buy a Lamborghini and then being too scared to drive it. So I, I actually do think, and this has changed from when I first started, but I do think that success with women with business with fitness whatever it is that you actually want to become successful with i do think it's about 93 percent in a game like if somebody brainwashed me right now like if somebody like inserted an sd card or sprayed me with like some like really like clever cologne and brainwashed me into believing that i was just like the most fuckable man on the planet. Somebody like brainwashed me into believing that I was like God's gift to women. I was the greatest entrepreneur a lot. Like if someone actually brainwashed me into believing that, then I would act in accordance with that affirmation. My mm. actions would match my ambitions. And like I, I've met a lot of guys and the guys who are, in, who are in my network, they're like, yeah, I've traveled to Colombia. I've gone to this place and this place. And it's like, 
always the guys who are doing the best, especially when it comes to women. They might not be the best looking. They might not be the most in shape. They might not even be making the most money. Mm. But like they outscore everybody on, I think, the metric that matters the most and is a metric that I think has the biggest purchasing power in the sexual marketplace, which is belief. Like if you genuinely do believe in yourself, and I think it's got almost like diluted in cliches like you might see an Instagram post like believe in yourself you know mm. all this stuff but like it's, it's actually the ultimate aphrodisiac I think if you actually do genuinely believe fully in yourself which is like believing in your product believing that you are the best thing on this earth because there's no rules for any of this stuff we get to decide um I, I do think that is going to be a massive game changer for a lot of people um getting to that place is definitely a different story so i don't know if you want to like go into how to actually develop that core belief in yourself oh absolutely um you know and and in fact on some of the the things that you said there definitely i mean self-affirmation is an element of what people need to be doing they need to actually say to themselves like oh i am actually good at something um people are, are too quick to knock themselves Mm -hmm. and if they haven't yet had some kind of good experience for whatever reason then it's i think it's very difficult for them to actually try and uh give themselves over those affirmations and actually tell themselves they are capable of getting good results in something or actually they are a good human being or they are good at doing something um have you ever, with your clients, ever dealt with someone who, who's, you know, their negativity was just very overwhelming for them and, and that was like literally the one thing that was just preventing them from getting good results until you finally knocked it out of them and it was like, oh, they've stepped out of their own way here and now they're actually getting good results because they believe in themselves for doing it. Yeah, so for me, I actually get, well... I mean, something that I give to people for free before they even consider actually working with me. It's, it's, a, it's a free course that I give out to people. Um, and in that free course, there's something called the personal renaissance document. So mm. I think that people actually get affirmations wrong. Whenever people make affirmations, they're always like, I'm confident, I'm great with women, I make lots of money, whatever. Very simple, isn't it? It's, well, it's, it's, actually the, it's, 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 it's actually the pronoun which is the problem. Mm. So most people refer to themselves as I. But what I found to be true over the years is affirmations are actually more powerful when you refer to yourself in the third person as if somebody else is saying it. Because if somebody else is saying something about you, that actually allows the affirmation to carry greater emotional weight. Mm. So rather than saying to myself, I am the most fuckable man on the planet, I can attract any woman I want into my life, it's actually more powerful if I replace I with Christian. So instead of being like I, I replace I with Christian. So Christian is the most fuckable man on the planet. Oh, Christian can attract any woman who he wants into his life. Oh, Christian can make, or Christian is making a hundred thousand pounds per month with his multi international coaching business. Why is that funny? <laughs> just, just how you said it with such a deadpan voice oh, throughout that. Yeah, but like that's that's all in my personal Renaissance document. So I, I've, I've I've already created mine and I share it with the guys or in my network. Also, oh, actually, like you've written something down as like. Yeah, mine is uh, mine, mine is Chris. Okay, so mine is Chris in Casanova is a seven figure entrepreneur. Um, he makes a hundred thousand pounds per month from his multi international coaching empire. The reason why Christian's clients are desperate to work with him is because he's a number one cold approach coach on the planet. Like, yada, yada, yada. So you've got a vision board. Yeah, it's, personal, it's a personal Renaissance document. Yeah. So it's not it's not a vision board because most vision boards are stupid because most vision boards. Yeah, but it's more picture based. Yeah, but like most people refer to themselves in the first person, but you. For me, it, it makes more sense if you refer to yourself in the third person as if somebody else is saying it and you talk about yourself as if it's already happened. Mm. So rather than like, I want to make, it's 
Christian is making, right? And then by tapping into that frequency, you feel as though what it would feel like to be that version of you. Yeah. That's that's step one. And then step two is actually to act as if you already are that person. So like, what would that £100,000 per month version of me look like? What would he move like? How would he operate, right? It's like, he's got that abundance mentality. So whatever he spends, he'll make back. Yeah, if he sees the most attractive woman in the venue, okay, then that version of me would go over, he would talk to her, he wouldn't worry about money or finances because he's got that abundance mentality. So it's just, it's crafting your character strategically Mm. and then referring to yourself in the third person as though you've already achieved those things. Like, that that's what I did four years ago before Mm. I actually started any of this stuff. I already referred to myself as the number one cold approach coach on the planet. I'd already met myself in the future, who I wanted to be, and then I reverse engineered it. And now four years later, I've become what I practiced. I've become what I had in my mind because it doesn't happen by luck. It happens by design. Mm. So I always used to be one of those people who was like, oh, that's really abstract. That's really woo-woo. Like, it's just kind of, I'm like, I'm I'm a practical person and I like practical solutions. But then once I actually understood that everything that's ever been created in this world has all it's all started off with a thought. It's like, oh, a skyscraper, a yacht, like a fucking coffee table. It's all started because somebody imagined that it could be possible to create it. And it's the same with identity as well. Like, if you can imagine it, you can become it. We become what we practice. Hmm. So you create your personal renaissance document. You refer to yourself in the third person. And then you act as if you already are that person. And then every action that you take, you're investing into the identity of the person who you want to embody. So that that's how change happens fast. And again, that's like a free thing I give away on my channel. Um, it's like, it's... it's my most fuckable man course. Um, if you go into any one of my YouTube videos, the descriptions are all the same. You can access it for free. And I'll walk you through the step-by-step process of actually concocting your own document. Um, and most of the people who actually joined the network, um, that's the reason why they actually joined. They were like, I did the personal renaissance document. I really enjoyed that. And then I wanted to connect with you on a deeper level. So yeah, that's cool. So if you've not done that, then I would say you should do it. Well, what I like actually with what you've said there is um, when you're speaking, of, you're almost speaking about yourself then in, in past tense with with the affirmation. So you're, it's as if the change has already happened and you are now that better man. You are that person that you want to be. And in a way, it's kind of then you're actually allowing yourself to just sort of, I don't know if like stepping into your footsteps is probably the right term for it, or at least that's how I'm like envisioning it, that... You know, if that's the person that you want to be, why not just say, I'm already that person. I'm already doing it. And then when you go and take action, it's a matter of you essentially already embodying this new person that you want to be. Does that make, does that make sense? Have I kind of made that... Yeah, right. yeah, it's 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 like yeah, a- acting as if like the, the way that I operate in my life is like I'm already a millionaire. I just don't have the money in my pocket yet. It's like I'm already the most famous man on the planet. I'm just waiting for the rest of the world to catch up. So it's mm-hmm. like the the way that I perceive myself now is like like before I started everything four years ago, my perception of myself was very dire. It was very dismal. It was very self-deprecating. Whenever I had like a positive intention or any sort of thing that positive pops into my mind, I would immediately like try to like quash it, be like, yeah, stay in your lane. Who do you think you are? Like, you're never going to be able to do any of these things. I just came from like conditioning from childhood. And I, I think that's why doing all of this stuff, it, like people label it as woo-woo because the whole point of the ego is self-preservation. It's like it wants to keep you static. It wants to keep you safe. But by doing these exercises, actually referring to yourself in the third person, acting as if you already are that person, it will feel a little bit weird at first, but Mm -hmm. that like change is uncomfortable. I think in order to reach that next level, because the way that I always frame it to people is like, if you could be making the money you want to be making, if you could be dating the women you want to be dating, if you could be living the life you want to be living, you would already be doing all of these things, but you're not. 
right? So in order for us to accelerate and get to the next level, we have to metaphorically crucify this current version of us and become the version of us who can actually achieve these things. So rather than chasing goals, we chase an identity. So rather than being like, oh, I want to attract this absolute 10 of a woman, right? It's like, oh, who do I need to become in order to be able to attract that woman? Like, who do I need to become to make this amount of money a month, a year? Who do I need to become in order to feel super confident in myself? So rather than chasing these materialistic goals, we chase an identity. I think when we chase an identity, it makes it more doable because it's like, oh, I can take the actions of the person who already does these things. So it's like, you know, like fucking looking after yourself, training, sleeping well, like eating good food, approaching women each day, um, like looking after people in your family. So I think it's better to chase an identity rather than it is to chase a goal, if that makes sense. Yeah, and and as you kind of worked on yourself over the last four years, I mean, even when I remember when you started, yeah, there was there's certainly a shift in in mindset from uh, from then until now. Um, the things that you mentioned, is that what you kind of did early on uh, in your sort of like uh, approaching journey that you'd kind of embodied all these these mindset shifts and, and that's what, what took place? Or, or what, what was the, what was the, how did things start for you? And then at what point did you start incorporating these changes and then notice those changes? Yeah, so I, I've always seen coal approach as, as a catalyst for the rest of my life. Like I never got into cold approach because I wanted to cold approach purely to cold approach. Like I always saw cold approach as a way of leveling myself up across the board. So I was like, okay, if I can do this really scary thing that 99% of guys are never going to do in their lives, it's going to allow me to it's almost a cheat code into becoming that top 1% guy, which I think a lot of guys who watch these sort of videos, that's that's what they're striving to become. They want to separate themselves from the herd. They're probably in a place in their life where they feel disgusted with the person that they become. They want to reject ordinary. They're like, fuck mediocrity. I want to become something more. So that that's what cold approach was for me. I think a lot of the guys who watch my stuff, I think... Unfortunately, they get confused by the content that I create. They have this image in their mind where they think that I'm parading around the pavements for eight hours a day, just like chasing women. Or they think that I think cold approach is this like holy grail of meeting women. Like I think once you've mastered it, it's an incredibly efficient way. But it's more about the person that you become through this process and Mm. then how you utilize the skill set and apply it to the rest of your life. Like, I, I don't teach cold approach because I want my guys to stay on the streets. Like, the streets are the dojo. The streets are like the training ground. You will learn everything you ever need to about seduction, about sales, which are basically the same thing. You'll learn everything that you need on the streets. But for me, you don't want to get stuck on the streets. It's like, okay, you've learned how to approach, how to converse, how to close. You've learned how to connect with your most authentic self. You've learned the skill set on the streets. But then it's like, how do I apply that as I go about my entire life? So it's like, right, a party, a bar, a festival. So I like to view cold approach as this ultimate self-improvement exercise. Mm. Once you've mastered the skill set of cold approach... I do believe the world is yours because that's what it's been for me anyway. I used to think I was confident before I got started with Color Pro because I spent a decade as a magician. Now I realized I just had situational confidence, take away a pack of cards from my hands and I just was very scared. Mm -hmm. But now I've developed that core confidence through Cold Approach where I just believe that no matter what, I can handle it. There's a really great quote which is, throw me in hell, I'll find a way to enjoy it. So... That, that's what cold approach is for me. It's not like just cold approaching, oh, I'll approach today, I'll do like 10 sets, and then I'll, 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 I'll message my... I just think that's just like a fucking retarded way of cold approaching. I think that's like where most of these losers get stuck because that's like a decade out of date. Like, yeah, 
like we both know, you, you can meet incredible women just on the streets, like she's coming out of Zara. You can meet the love of your life just zipping past you. But for me, it's more holistic than that. It's who do we become through this process? And that that's the way that I've always viewed it. It's like for me to meet my wife-worthy woman, it's about me becoming the version of me who's ready to receive her. Hmm. So that that's how Cole Approach has played out for me. And and I, I agree with you that, you know, every approach that you're doing is essentially training you up to be the person that you want to be who is going to be that that right kind of guy for that that perfect girl out there that they want to have a relationship with or get married to and, and have kids with as well. No, very interesting. So uh, I think, I, I mean, again, I always love the, the practical side of things. What can... Uh, guys new to the idea of trying to work on their mindset to this legendary status, what kind of action steps can they take to, uh, to work on that, that inner confidence? Yeah, so I think that becoming a fucking legend is actually easier now than it's ever been before because most people are sheep. Most people are static spectators rather than active players, right? So most people just glued to a screen all day fucking scrolling TikTok. See, competition is actually not that fierce. Mm. But I would say, super practical terms, I think any guy who is serious about transforming, especially guys who are clicking on this type of content, it's like you're already knowing yourself there's action that needs to be taken, right? You're not ordinary. You're not ordinary if you're watching this type of content because it means that you've already got a call to action inside of you. So you're ready to create something special. Do 100 direct cold approaches ASAP. That's, that's the formula that I give to everybody. 100 direct cold approaches, which literally means you finding 100 women who you find attractive, going over to them, being like, hi, excuse me, you look amazing, have a good day. You just do that 100 times. If you can do that 100 times, you're going to operate on a completely different frequency to 99% of guys. The reason why I say 100 is because in my experience, that's what it takes to actually develop proficiency. If you just do one approach doesn't really make that much difference like you might feel on like a little bit of a high for like a couple of days but then it'll subside 10 meh once you've done 100 direct call approaches you're going to be operating on what i call godly frequency because you're going to be like whoa i've done 100 right now it will start to feel as effortless as drinking water after you've done 100 direct call approaches and that that would be the main thing that i would give to anybody like a guaranteed way of developing that rock star confidence do 100 direct call approaches as soon as possible. View the rep itself as the reward. Be action focused rather than outcome dependent. So you're not approaching these women to get phone numbers, to get dates, to get happy endings. You're viewing it like going to the gym, right? You're, you're, you're lifting the barbell, not necessarily because you want to get a bigger chest, but to prove to yourself that you've got the strength to do the thing. So once you've done that 100 times, you will feel like a completely new man. And this is why I suggest to guys, before they, before they even consider working with me, joining my network, traveling the world with me, it's like, go outside, do 100 direct call approaches and get yourself to that level where you go from zero to one, yeah? Because once you've gone from zero to one, just being at that place where you've already got 100 direct call approaches under your belt, it doesn't even matter, you could be 21, you could be 31, you could be fucking 71. Get 100 direct call approaches done as soon as possible you'll start to feel like a fucking legend because when, when I was first learning magic, like at 13 years old, I had severe social anxiety. I used to break out into sweating fits at school when I got put on the spot to answer questions. I understood that belief follows action, right? I can't think my way into this fucking legendary state. I need to take difficult action. I need to dive bomb into discomfort. I need to use resistance as my compass. And every time you're able to just jump into something that scares you, you just start to develop more of that belief. But for me, anyway, in my experience, belief follows action. Mm. I think that's a, a great way to, um, to put it. So as long as guys are at least taking action, approaching women, uh, also perceiving this sort of new version of themselves and rather than saying I will be that person say that they are already that person and in fact rather than saying I 
swap it with their own name uh, to make it as an even clearer and bolder statement, which I think it then, by the sounds of it, they'll, they'll relate to it even more. It sinks in more because it's they're having their name thrown in there. It's a bit like if someone tells you off. If they don't use your name, it doesn't quite hit hard. But I think when someone says, like, like Daniel, how can you use it? Then it's like, okay, right, yep. Yeah. You've, you've caught my attention loud and clear here. So, uh, so interesting. No, I, I like that those there's very simple changes and tweaks that, that people can make and also just creating, um, I suppose, I know you don't like to, terming it as a vision board. Uh, in, in my mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of perceive it as a vision board. So. It's a document. <laughs> it's a do- <laughs> you've, got, you've got the text version. I've got the image version in, in my mind. Um, but it, it sounds like as well that just having also something to be aiming towards uh, or working towards can just help to, um, I don't know if lubricate the process is probably the right term for it, but it just gets the ball rolling. Um, and I think even just respecting the fact that you're not going to just be an overnight success with your mindset. You're not just going to suddenly wake up the next day and be like, you know what, I am an absolute fucking legend. You have to work at it. And you have to give yourself, uh, would you say you have to kind of give yourself like a window of time or it's just a, uh, I'm, I'm aiming forward and it, it, will, it is happening. Not it will happen, it is happening. Yeah, so for me, the unfortunate reality is you need to share the document with people. Like if, if you just keep it to yourself, the high likelihood is nothing will actually change. Well, you're talking about accountability now, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, so the affirmations need to be met with accountability. The problem with most people today is they don't want to share their dreams with the world because they're worried what other people are going to think of them. But this is castrating you of your confidence. Like, th- th- this is the reason why I get the guys who are in my network to share their Renaissance document with the rest of the people in the group because... It feels uncomfortable. Nobody wants to share their innermost desires with other people. But it's only by sharing them that you actually give yourself permission to achieve them. Because once you've shared them, it holds you accountable. Yeah, but it's like you actually just start to develop this zero fucks given attitude. It's like, this is me. This is who I want. This is what I want. It's like you're just like putting your stake in the ground. It's like, yeah. This is what I want. And you've got full transparency of desire then. I think that the biggest problem that guys make whenever they're trying to go on this journey of personal renaissance is they keep everything to themselves, yeah? They don't have people. Like, they've not found their tribe. They don't have their brothers around them who they can actually, like, lean on to hold them accountable. So once that secret is out there, it actually, for me anyway, and for the guys who I work with, it actually makes it seem more likely because now it's like, oh, the rest of the world knows. It's not this like closet secret anymore. So yeah, in in terms of setting a timeline, I don't think it's that important. I think what's more important is actually you have the emotional bravery to share it with people who actually understand it. I think that's the most important point. And that's the reason why I put my network together because it's this echo chamber of empathy. There's nothing that my guys can't share with each other that they're just going to get flooded with support. Even if a guy's like, hey guys, I'm struggling at the moment. I'm struggling with addictions. Like I'm, I'm really um, in, a, in a bad place. It's like, boom, flooded with support. Like I've had conversations with people who I've worked with that they've never had conversations like that before because they know that they can trust me. So I think just, just find your tribe of people, attract your people, repel the rest, make sure you've got your document and then actually have the emotional bravery to share it. I think that's the most important thing. Mm. Which kind of leads on to, uh, I think, the, uh, the next section, which is uh, creating that lifestyle of a legend because I, I quite like that even with um uh, with the community side of things like being able to work with one of your clients here in amsterdam um and i know obviously you're going to have a, another client tomorrow um i think it's been brilliant that your reach has become international that you are working with clients uh, all over the place and you've also created for yourself this like international man of mystery uh lifestyle that has allowed you to travel with work, which 
certainly makes it, I think, even more attractive to the women that you're you're meeting when you're you're going out and about, especially in the conversations uh, that I've sort of filmed you and, and heard you have with people. So, what can guys do to also now work on this area of their life, their lifestyle? What can they do to become a legend in the lifestyle area? I know it's an even broader title but I suppose we'll kind of limit it to things like health or fitness, nutrition, traveling, social circle, community, um, yeah those, those sort of things and maybe if there's anything else even outside of that, mm-hmm. those bubbles but yeah in, in general as a lifestyle what can guys do? Mm-hmm. Yeah so I think I think this is an important aspect because I think good good game can't make up for a shitty location. Mm. So I think you need to really make sure that you go where you're valued, you go where you're appreciated, you go where you find the women attractive, you enjoy the weather, yada, yada, yada. So just just for context, when I started everything in 2020, I had £24.82 of universal credit in my bank account, right? So I was completely broke at that point in my life. I was 23 years old. Um, I was actually borrowing money from uh, my mum in order for me to pay for things. Like when we first uh, filmed together, yeah. like that was money that some money came through from magic, other money I had to just borrow from like family members because I just didn't have the money in my bank account to facilitate mm. any of this stuff. But I just knew that I knew who I wanted to be because it started off with the personal renaissance document. I knew that I wanted to be the best in the world. Was it also called the, the personal renaissance document four years no, ago? No, at the time, no. Did it, it, did it just, have more it, of a quirky name? No, it was just like, just like a fucking PDF that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like who I want to be. Christian's dream Christian's job. vision, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and then when I got in contact with you and I was like, hey, I've heard you're the guy to do the filming side of things for me. And like... Like, it didn't even matter what figure you said to me. Like, it didn't matter how much it was going to cost. I knew I was going to do whatever it took to get that money together. Mm. Like, I was going to pay for the, the, the train ticket, the economy. Like, it doesn't matter. And like, I think this is the biggest problem that I see with guys today. They are, quite frankly, just little bitches. They, they don't have what it takes. They don't have this killer mindset where it's like, right, I've got this vision. I know who I want to be. I'm going to do whatever it takes to achieve this thing. It's like, oh... Oh yeah, you know, like maybe I'll maybe I'll do it next year. Oh, I need to, I need to talk to my dog about it. Yeah, oh, they, they kind to, of give up just, and, and create people, excuses. It's, 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 it's complete bullshit. You're never gonna yeah. you're never gonna get anywhere. So, what, like the point being, when I started, I had no money, right? No money whatsoever. Fourteen months later, I was living internationally, right? Fourteen months later. I had my first European jaunt to, to Krakow in Poland. Mm. So I left my nine to five job like 14 months after starting with nothing, like literally nothing. I got money from the fucking government. Like 14 months after starting, I then had £3,000 in my bank account, which is still next to nothing. But that £3,000 demonstrated to me that I had a safety net that I could optimise to actually make something of this coaching business. So 14 months after I started, I left my nine to five. I was working in the Railway Museum in York. I was a public speaker. And I left that job like 14 months after I started filming with you. And then I started living internationally, like started to to live this this international lifestyle. Um, But for me realistically if you if you want to do the whole international lifestyle i believe just to get started you only actually need two thousand pounds a month of recurring revenue to actually be able to go anywhere you want in the world um i had a conversation with one of the guys in my network joseph who's been living internationally for the past decade Mm. and we both agreed on this figure if you can find a way, just this is just at the start. Like I don't want anybody to think that you should have you should have have aspirations of just making two thousand pounds a month, like recurring. But to get started, that's actually a solid number. Mm. Like if you can make two thousand pounds a month recurring, so maybe you can do e-commerce, you can do drop shipping, you can do affiliate marketing, you could be. Um, a high ticket remote remote closer, so you do like sales and like sell other people's products. Two thousand pounds, or like two thousand dollars, even two thousand dollars per month recurring. 
you, you can pretty much live any way you want in the world. Like, are you going to be able to live in a penthouse in Dubai? No, but you can still get an Airbnb in Dubai if you really wanted to go to Dubai. But like, you can go to Southeast Asia and live like an absolute king for two thousand dollars a month. You actually can. Like, I've been there. Like, I've done that. But you actually don't need as much money as you think. But I think that just finding that vehicle which allows you to make, let's say, two thousand dollars per month recurring. That's the biggest game changer because once you've started to accrue that money by doing whatever you're doing, for me, it was building a personal brand on YouTube. So creating videos, giving value for free. And then once people know, like, and trust me, putting an offer in front of them. So, but I like, I I actually wouldn't recommend that to most people because building a brand on social media is going to take a crazy amount of time and energy and commitment. Like we both know, like doing YouTube it's, it's a lot of work. Mm. And unless you unless you actually feel as though it speaks to your soul on an energetic level, I actually think you're better off doing something else. So like, like fucking sales, e-commerce, drop shipping. Just find a vehicle that suits your personality. Um, but I think $2,000 per month recurring, that will allow you to start to develop that fuck you money where you're like, right, I don't need to work in Tesco anymore. I don't need to stack shelves. I don't need to work at that restaurant. Mm. You don't need to be a multi-millionaire to, to, to have a multi-millionaire-esque mm. lifestyle. And I think what it was for me, once I got that first taste, like I lived in Krakow in 2022. My Airbnb cost £296 for the month. Mm. Like £296 for the month. In Leeds, the city that I was living, it cost me about £1,200 for all of my expenses. And I could live via Airbnb in Krakow, 296 all in. Didn't have to pay for water, council tax, Wi-Fi, electricity. It was all in, in that price. So once you found your vehicle to actually make money, honestly, I do believe the world's your oyster. Mm. But I think that... Going from that zero to one, I think that's a bigger step for most people. But I think that a lot of people don't realize how doable the whole international lifestyle is. I think for a lot of people, it's the fear of the unknown, right? Comfort is the biggest enemy. It's like, oh, well, you know, I've got my comfortable job. I'm working at the fucking Four Seasons Hotel. I make X amount. It's like you could be doing a lot more than you're currently doing. It's just about taking that leap of faith. But I think... $2,000 $2,000 per month recurring, <laughs> you've already unlocked the international lifestyle. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, I, and, I, that's, and if anything, yeah, that's kind of one half of um, absolutely the picture with, with the lifestyle element of becoming a legend. And, and I suppose the other half of it is really like, what did you do for like your uh, health, uh, fitness and, and nutrition? Because I mean, I, I must admit, I, I, I love your eating habit. I think, I'm, I think even after all these years, I still find it kind of funny. But, um, but I mean, share with guys, what, what do you do to, to take care of yourself? Because I know you get comments on your videos. I've seen your comments on your videos of how hilarious it is where guys are saying like, oh, he's just he's such a good looking dude. He's always managed to, to just impress women with his physique and stuff. But people don't really consider how hard you worked for it. And I know at least in the four years that I've known you, the level of fitness you've done with going to the gym and doing like your your barbell and dumbbell weights and, and things, and then the uh, the random eating times that you've got, especially when you were going through your porridge phase as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, share with guys, what, what kind of things have you done to work on your physique that potentially guys at home can... Uh, can mimic and have a go at themselves yeah definitely I think that when when whenever whenever I see these comments like oh it, it's 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 easy for this guy he's got xyz oh it's 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 like again m- most of these people online are genuinely retarded because when I first started making videos four years ago the narrative was very different it was always this guy's ugly. This guy's physically disadvantaged. This guy's a four out of ten at best. Yeah, I remember that they just knock you for yeah. literally everything. So people know? want to see you do well. They don't want to see you do better than them. And mm. I've noticed that once I've started to surpass people, the narrative has shifted significantly. Now it's like, oh, this guy gets results because of the way that he looks. Well, hang on a minute. Four years ago, it was a case of I couldn't get anywhere because of the way that I looked, right? So the way you start is not the way that you finish, right? I'm a perfect example of that. And that's why I've used this channel on my 
YouTube to document the entire process, right? I started off in the absolute mud and now I'm in a position in my life where people are actually criticizing me because of the vanity metrics that I've accumulated. So again, the internet is genuinely full of retards and the only people who will ever criticize you are people who hate themselves, right? People who hate, hate themselves. You'll never find a successful pe- person who hates on other people, right? Because they're successful, they don't need to. So it, it, it's always the low life losers who've got something to say, right? So that needs to be kept in mind. Whenever you get criticized, whenever someone says something like nasty about you, yeah, it's always a reflection on that person. They are mm. deeply unhappy with where that li- their life is. And it would have been very easy of me to go down that route as well. Like I could have ventured towards that like black pill, bitter, or all this fucking nonsense. But like ultimately what I learn is no one else is coming to save you. No one gives a flying fuck about you, right? If you wanna if you wanna wallow, if you wanna cry, you wanna complain, I've got to a point now where I just don't have time for those people. There's a guy who commented on one of my videos the other day who just like fucking complain or whatever. I'm like, yeah, cool, dating's over for you. Go fucking lie in a ditch somewhere because I don't really care anymore. It's like if I've been able to make something of myself from where I started to where I'm at now, if you don't want to put the effort in, then honestly, fuck you because like it, it, it just demonstrates like who you actually are as a person. Like why would a woman want to date you if you can't even, like you wouldn't even want to date yourself anyway. So to answer your question, my eating habits. Um, yeah, so I think like I've, I've been doing intermittent fasting for a really long time. So I basically don't eat for 24 hours and that allows me to feel mentally sharp. I feel more mentally cognizant. I can reiterate my thoughts better. Um, but I think once you start living internationally, you're going to find a lot of uh, discomfort. You're going to be out of a routine. So the, the thing that's always helped me is just doing uh, like sprints. So wherever I go in the world, I find a really steep hill and I'll sprint up that hill. Like, you know, sprint up, jog back, sprint up, jog back. That's just been a really great way to just sort of live that sort of like legendary lifestyle, like doing those, doing those sprints really puts you into a, a different sort of frequency when yeah, I was so living. That, that's what you do for fitness wise yeah. when you, you're traveling around, especially if you, is that if you haven't been able to get like a gym membership somewhere or is that you, you still get a gym membership and you go and find a hill and go running? Uh, usually I'll just find a hill and go running. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, I just find it's just a, a better high than any sort of like weightlifting. So I find like if I'm, if I'm doing any sort of weightlifting, I always find I'm very static. I'm sat down or mm. I'm like weight, whatever. So I just like those like, like short bursts of intensity where I go hard, get it done within 30 minutes. And it's like by doing that at the start of my day, it's like I've, I've front loaded and then everything else that I do that day feels a lot easier. So like when I was living in Cyprus at the start of this year, myself and Ephraim, who's a member of the, the entourage, is we, we, we did sprints at the start of our day and then we went back, we had a cold shower and then we did our approaching sessions together. And we just found that the approaches were just so much more seamless because we'd already done the most difficult thing at the start of the day. Once we did the sprints, like approaching women felt completely effortless. Mm. So yeah, I mean, my my routine is pretty simple. I just try not to eat like really shit food. I sprint, I just like sprint my absolute bollocks off and then I get cold showers and I then will call approach women who I find attractive and that makes me feel nice. Okay, and I suppose really like final question, just to give guys a bit of a structure with how they can attempt to do that themselves uh, as well. Uh, what kind of frequency, or how frequently I should probably say, uh, are you doing workouts a week? How do you spread that out? Um, how long are you doing them for? And then as for eating habits as well, uh, what what does that kind of look like and what are your meals typically when you're, you're doing that? Because of course, these all, all these things will help shape your physique yeah. Uh, and it sounds like even uh, uh, with how you think about stuff and articulate things, it also seems to make uh, a difference. And I know in all the years I've known you, you've been very good at being able to articulate stuff. Far better than me anyway. Um, so, yeah, just how uh, how frequently would you do all these things? And, and yeah, what sort of things would you eat? 
Yeah, times. so you literally sprint three times a week. That's all you need to do. Like 30 minutes, that's it. You only need 30 minutes. And before anyone's like, oh, I work a nine to five job. Oh, I work. I live in the UK. No one gives a flying fuck. Like, I was doing these sprints when I was working. Like before I started work at the Railway Museum, I would set an alarm for 5 a.m. And this was like during uh, December in the UK, in Leeds. I would walk out my apartment. I would do sprints. And I would go back, I'd get a cold shower when it was like minus two outside. Then I would go, I would do my job at the Railway Museum. Whilst I went to the Railway Museum, I'd be editing my videos in the fucking library during my lunch break. And then I would come back and do whatever. But like, so just just the point that I'm making is that, that, there's, that there's always going to be an excuse that you can make, right? But it just comes down to how much you actually want it. Like if you actually want to live like a fucking legend, if you actually want to live a life that most men don't live, you have to be prepared to do what most men aren't prepared to do. So there really is no reason why you can't do these things. It literally takes 30 minutes a day, but not even a day, like three times a week. So like 30 minutes, three times a week, you can do your hill sprints or just fucking sprints, just sprint. Um, and I just eat once a day. Like I usually eat at like 6 p.m. Um, I don't really have any structure anymore, really, in terms of like counting calories, counting macros, like tracking my protein. Like I went through that phase and I kind of feel like it's a bit autistic now. I'm like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to compete to be Mr. R- Mr. Olympia. I'm not trying to compete with fucking Chris Bumstead. Like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be Alex Hormozy. Like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be one of the fitness guys. Like that's not my, that, that's not my realm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to out-compete the fitness guys because they're just, far too many guys in the world who've got better bodies than me. So mm. like I'm not I'm not trying to compete with the fitness people. I'm just doing it because I enjoy doing it. So it's like I think that's the best way to do all of these things. It's like just do it because you enjoy it. It's like be excited about who you are, even more excited about who you're becoming. Like there's always gonna be somebody who's got a fucking better body than you, who's making more money than you, who's got a fucking better colour Bugatti huh, than you. Like there's always gonna be these people in there. It doesn't, it doesn't really fucking matter. Um, I just aim to be like 1% better than I was yesterday. But yeah, to answer your question, um, I eat most days, 6 p.m., that's it. I have one big meal and I enjoy it. I don't really care too much about what I'm like consuming. I'm not eating like fucking like fucking chocolate, like, like 3,000 calories of dark chocolate. Um, and then just sprint like three times a week. It, it, it's, it's pretty simple. So final area then, which I, you, in a way we've kind of sort of touched on it a lot. You've actually given some good examples, but how can guys now work on the dating element? How can they be a legend in dating? And for some guys that might be having like multiple dates and seeing lots of women, whereas others it could be, the idea that they get so confident with talking to women that they desensitize themselves with approaching and like with what you mentioned before that you know that they are building themselves up to be the person that they want to be so when they meet that ideal woman they are ready for them uh, and they'll be kind of embraced by them as well so what kind of action steps can guys do to work on their dating and I suppose be a legend in that as well yeah i think first of all for me it, it all this it all depends on what you actually want yeah so one of my good friends joseph said to me once that you actually only need one woman to think that you're a fucking legend that's all you actually need like all of this like oh be a high value man have like multiple women on the go have this rotation of fifty thousand fucking women in your fucking harem like Yeah, cool. That might sell on social media. If you're a bald guy, you've got fucking sunglasses on, you've got like a fucking high net worth, then people will probably gobble that shit up. Like, what color is your fucking Bugatti? But I think for most guys, like genuinely what they actually want, like we spoke about, is they just want to be wanted. That's all they fucking want. Like, if you could just find one amazingly awesome woman the next time you left her house, she just thought that you were the dog's bollocks. She loved you. She worshipped you. She absolutely adored you. <laughs> You've just cracked dating. Congratulations. <laughs> and you can actually just do that in, in like, one week, mm. which is a mad thing. Like, I've, I've worked with guys, and before they, they came to me, they were in a dire state when it came to women because they'd been brainwashed by the brain dead into wanting to want, which other people had told them that they should want to want. Oh, I need all of these women. I need to be doing that. that, that. It's like, just cut the bullshit. Like, what do you actually want? And for the majority of guys, like you've explained to me, they just want to have a best friend who they can have sex with. 
<laughs> that's that's what most guys want. If like if you could wake up tomorrow and just imagine that you had this woman, this like just this 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 beautiful woman who just wanted you. She liked you for who you were rather than what you had. I think that's what actually most guys want. I think this is why for me cold approach is the most effective way because we're not cold approaching to get through a, a fucking gazillion amount of women, right? We're cold approaching to become that version of us who's ready to receive that woman who I believe we've been put on this earth, earth for. So I think dating actually becomes very simple when you view it through this lens. Rather than going out there trying to be everything to everybody, you're just trying to be a somebody for the right somebody. And f- for me, that just makes dating so much easier. And it makes it so much more manageable in the minds of guys. So, like I said before, do 100 direct call approaches, get skin in the game, learn how to get rejected, learn how to de- develop re- emotional resilience, understand that you're not going to be every woman's type, but just because you don't get some doesn't mean that you won't get any. And the more you level up your life across the board, your fitness, your fashion, your finances, actually get to a point of self-adoration rather than self-deprecation, that woman is going to enter your life at some point. Mm. But I think it's... It's by doing these cold approaches, by taking the difficult action, that is a moment when you see that woman from across the room at the bar at the festival, because you've, done, you, you've taken all of these actions, those approaches that you've done have compounded over time and now you've become the version of you who's actually ready to approach that woman. So I, I just view all approaches that anybody does as preparation for their potential partner. So, like, I think becoming a fucking legend in dating is actually very simple. You do your 100 direct cold approaches. You're not cold approaching just a cold approach. You're not becoming a fucking pickup artist. It's not, it's not like bollocks. Oh, parade around the pavement eight hours a day, London day game ball. You look French when I think about fucking France. Think about you with a baguette under your arm. Like, no one gives a... F- no one gives a flying fuck about any of this shit. Like, you sound like C-3PO. Like, it's, it's, it's not doing any of these shit. It's just understanding why you're actually going out there, right? You're investing into the identity of the person who you're ready to embody. Dating becomes so much more simple when you understand that you only need one woman. You only need one woman to think that you are a fucking legend. I think that's what most guys actually want. Like when I've sat down with the guys who I've worked with, when we cut, cut away the bullshit, we just remove the filtered, the filtered facade, the airbrushed images. Like what do you actually want? Honestly, Christian, I just want to be wanted. I just want to find a best friend who I can do life with. That would be great for me, right? That makes it fucking simple because now we just need one, right? It's like if you're running a business and you're like, oh, I want to make a million a month, all right? Well, you're currently making zero a month, so that's going to take a little bit of time. But it's like, you know, why, why do you need so much? Like, why do you need so much in there? Instead, it's like, well, you know, I'd be really happy right now with a thousand. Great, we can get there. So it's like, I think just identifying what you actually want, not what other people want, but like what you actually want, um, and then reverse engineering from there. But I think just just, just recognising that you actually only need one woman. Um, I think that's why most guys get into this. It's like, oh yeah, cool, I want to sleep around. Well, that gets old pretty fucking quickly. It's just like all these like fucking, you know, empty, empty experiences. I think most guys just want one. I think you only actually need one great woman to support you, who compliments your lifestyle, And I think once you find the right woman, I heard somebody say, um, most men are frustrated because they currently lack love from the feminine. And I think that's the biggest tragedy in our world today. You've got social media, we've got dating apps, we've got, you know, fucking Instagram DMs. But I think people are more disconnected than they've ever been before, especially women. Like They've got all these options, they've got selection paralysis, you give them the menu, it's like, I don't know what to pick here. I think I think we're just crying out for connection. And for me, cold approach, like organic organic attraction, face to face, no bullshit, no day naps, no fucking hanging around grotty nightclubs until three a.m. DMing women, just to, whatever. Just going over to women, declaring your desire in non needy way. Right, you only need one, and like your future wife, she could be the next woman who you approach like in person. I've always found that quite a nice thing about like daytime cold approach. It's like fucking hell, like. I could just meet the mother of my children the next time I leave the house. And I think that's quite a nice thing. No, I think that's, that's amazing. So if anything, just to round off, 
tell the guys where to find you. Although I know, I'm sure they're probably already like subscribed to you anyway, a good portion of them. But um, yeah, let guys know where to find you and, and what you have to offer. Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube. It's Christian Casanova. Christian with a K, Casanova with a K. It's like the Kardashians, but I don't have a jacuzzi. Um, yeah, you can find me on YouTube. Um, I post videos regularly. I do a live stream every single day. Um, that's like 1% of what I offer. Um, if you want to connect with me personally, then I run a private network. It's like a private community. It's called The Entourage. That's where all my high-level guys hang out. We've got six and seven-figure entrepreneurs, business owners, digital nomads, just high-level guys who are crushing it. It's got a specific interest in cold approach, right? So if you're a guy, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, if you're a high achiever and you want to connect with the like-minded guys, guys who actually get it, like enter a safe space where you can associate yourself with other guys who are out there in the field and also guys you can have a pint with, guys you can talk about fucking football with, business, philosophy, art, whatever. Um, that's why I built this community because I think the most important areas of life are, are relationships and community and that's what I want to give to people. You've got great community, you've got, you've got re- great relationships, you're probably going to be in a good fucking place. So yeah, uh, Christian Casanova on YouTube, you can go over, um, you can subscribe, you can like my videos. If you don't like me, then unsubscribe, just like my videos. <laughs> uh, make like a reaction hate video on me, like, oh, Christian Casanova is a scam and then make like a 10 minute video. Whatever you make, it'll get me traction. So I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, that, 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 that would be where you can find me. Um, otherwise, you can find me on Vine, and uh, it's Christine Casanova. I don't have Vine, but if I did have Vine, I think <laughs> Vine's actually going to make a comeback. Is it, do you reckon? Well, Elon, but Elon, it's Elon TikTok, com- though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's only seven seconds though. So Elon, Elon commented, been like Vine question mark a little while ago. So I think he's thinking about bringing Vine back, which mm-hmm. is actually very interesting. That would be quite competitive against TikTok because TikTok was originally modelled after Vine. It was. It started off as musically like mm-hmm. a lip syncing platform. Um, but yeah, Elon, if you're watching. Let me know when you're ready to join the entourage. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you an action take a discount. He's got a shitload of children as well, so that's like you know, just like pumping the entourage for life. Um, but yeah, shout out to Elon. Um, yeah, um, whatever, like like SpaceX, Neuralink, fucking Tesla. If you want to get into the entourage, let me know. There's a there's a there's a, there's a consultation call you can book in. Uh, we'll find out if you're the right fit, and if you are the right fit, then we can call approach together in Prague. Fantastic. Well, there you go. I mean, it's always a pleasure anyway to to do work with you and then have you on the channel to certainly share your wisdom and experience of the things that you've done on yourself that absolutely prove that it works and that guys, if they can follow it, uh, then there's no reason why they can't be following in your footsteps and getting those same results, um, probably even faster than the time that you've done it because you're essentially giving them the shortcut with the advice that you offer. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, If you can or if you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and there will be plenty more podcasts, not just with Christian, but with other dating, relationship, and trauma and anxiety experts of sorts as well that will be coming on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all of that future content. But other than that, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. This has obviously been Christian Casanova, especially as he mentioned it. Um, And uh, until next time, guys, I look forward to hearing from you and enjoy watching more of my videos and Christian's too.